Now, the pop star, who was once described as a violent and evil influence on the nation's youth, is back in London this week. The last time Alice Cooper came to Britain, back in 1973, Mary Whitehouse called on the BBC to ban his record, and six MPs asked the Home Secretary to refuse him permission to enter the country. But, despite their protests, Alice Cooper, real name Vince Fernier, together with Yvonne, his six-foot boa constrictor, swept in triumph into London. His entourage stopped the traffic in Piccadilly, his record reached number one, and apparently he thoroughly enjoyed himself. Since those riotous days, though, Alice Cooper has undergone something of a transformation. His heavy drinking turned into alcoholism, and at one stage last year, he was getting through two bottles of whiskey a day. But now he's cured, and his new album, entitled From the Inside, tells the story of the two months he spent being dried out in an American clinic. In a moment, I'll be talking to him about his new lifestyle. But first, here's a reminder of the horrific stage show which earned Alice Cooper his notoriety, an act which included the decapitation of blood-filled dolls and his own ritual execution. Alice Cooper, as we've said, you've recently achieved rehabilitation from the bottle. Do you think you perhaps needed a bit of rehabilitation also from that kind of performance? Well, from the pace of that kind of performance, you know, when, when we go out on tour, we go, well, we did one tour with 65 cities in 72 days. And uh, that kind of pace in hotel living will drive you mad. I think a lot of that had to do with my drinking, you know. Uh, but do you ever now, looking back, regret uh, the mutilation of dolls on stage with blood pouring out and the ritual hanging that you used to go in for at the end? No, because I never really liked dolls, you know. Dolls, it's the kind of thing where what I was doing at the time was to promote imagination on stage and, and to promote the idea of using the stage as an art form. I, I didn't like the idea of just going up and playing guitars and drums and that's it. You know, there's all that area to be used visually. And I thought that, as being a sensationalist, I thought that was the best way to do it. Would it be fair to say that uh, the art form was pursued as much in the interest of uh, commercial success as in the interest of the art form itself? Oh, yes. I'm a total, I'm a total commercialist when it comes to things like that. Uh, I, my main point, I think, when I go on stage is to entertain. I'm very unpolitical, and I'm, I absolutely hate preaching. And so my, my whole force on stage, I think, is the, is the fact that the audience knows that I'm not up there telling them anything. Did you ever wonder, though, if there mightn't be a kind of preaching in reverse, for instance, that by being an extravagant and violent performer, you might encourage imitation among the young and presumably impressionable people who were flocking to see you? It's, it's funny, because I found that, that the kids were much smarter, and when they came to the shows, they saw Alice as a legendary figure and they saw Alice as, as this animated figure. And I thought that the parents were the ones that were much more disturbed, whereas the kids took me very lightly. They saw what I did on stage and they went home and laughed about it and they were very giddy about it. And they said, oh, it was just like having another Halloween, an extra Halloween or a Guy Fawkes Day, I guess it is here. Alice, I don't think ever represented any violence to anybody. But uh, in addition, perhaps, as you were suggesting a moment ago to uh, slowing the pace down of your appearances. Are you also departing from this extravagantly sensational kind of presentation? Well, I've done that. I mean, I've done the hanging. I haven't done the hanging in seven years or so, uh, or the guillotine, really. But um, what I'm moving on to now is the, wh what punk rock is now is what I was doing in 68. Have you been upstaged, in effect, by punk rock? Is no. that why you're, you're no. changing? In fact, nobody in the rock business has ever upstaged an Alice Cooper production because we, we go very Zigfield and very Busby Berkeley with a sense of black humor to it. And I think we probably have the most extravagant production of anybody, $400,000 on the last production. I think the next one, from the inside production, will be a f at least a half a million dollars. Is your evolution away from the old kind of Alice Cooper anything to do with your personal 
uh, recent rehabilitation from alcoholism? Well, I do think differently now, you know, and I, I absolutely refuse to go back and do anything that I was famous for before because that would be backtracking. Uh, since I had already covered those bases and did that, uh, I feel it's unfair for audiences to want Alice to go back and do the, the, uh, the dolls and the hanging and stuff. I would much rather see Alice go ahead and do something different, but as extravagant. I gather that the new album and your new stage show as well, in some sense, recreate the experiences you had when you were kicking alcohol. Yeah. How does that work out? Well, in a, in a surrealistic way, I've always, in the last production, I took people into the nightmare. That was a common denominator. A nightmare is something that everybody has experienced. And they will look at the show and take many different things from, from what I present, the snake and things like that. And at the same time, now I'm going to take them to an asylum, a surrealistic view of an asylum, the same way that Salvador Dali would take them into an asylum if he were painting it. Alice Cooper talking earlier about how he's changed. He'll have to change a lot more, though, before they let him play Juliet. That's all from us tonight. Till the next time you're with us.